Pope Silvarius died the 2nd of December 538, ruled the Holy See from the 8th of June 536 to his deposition in 538, a few months before his death. Topic: Life. He was a legitimate son of Pope Hormistas, born in Frosinone, Lazio, some time before his father entered the priesthood. Silvarius was probably consecrated the 8th of June 536. He was a subdeacon when King Theodahad of the Ostrogoths forced his election and consecration. Geoffrey Richards interprets his low rank prior to becoming pope as an indication that Theodahad was eager to put a pro-Gothic candidate on the throne on the eve of the Gothic War and had passed over the entire diaconate as untrustworthy. The Liber Pontificalis alleges that Silvarius had purchased his elevation from King Theodahad. On 9 December 536, the Byzantine general Belisarius entered Rome with the approval of Pope Silvarius. Theodahad's successor Wittages gathered together an army and besieged Rome for several months, subjecting the city to privation and starvation. In the words of Richards, "...what followed is as tangled a web of treachery and double dealing as can be found anywhere in the papal annals." Several different versions of the course of events following the elevation of Silvarius exist. In outline, all accounts agree. Silvarius was deposed by Belisarius in March 538 and sent into exile. Vigilius, who was in Constantinople as Apocrisiarius or Papal Legate, was brought to Rome to replace him. They differ over the motivations of the parties involved. The fullest account is in the Breviarium of Liberatus of Carthage, who portrays Vigilius as a greedy and treacherous pro monophysite who ousted and virtually murdered his predecessor. In exchange for being made pope, Liberatus claims he promised Empress Theodora to restore the former Patriarch of Constantinople Anthemus to his position. Silvarius was sent into exile at Patara in Lycia, whose bishop petitioned the emperor for a fair trial for Silvarius. However, when Silvarius returned to Italy, instead of holding a trial Belisarius handed him over to Vigilius, who according to the Liber Pontificalis banished Silvarius to the desolate island Pomerola part of the Pontine Islands, where he starved to death a few months later. The account in the Liber Pontificalis is hardly more favorable to Vigilius. That work agrees with Liberatus that the restoration of Anthemus to the Patriarchate was the cause of Silvarius' deposition, but Vigilius was initially sent to persuade Silvarius to agree to this, not replace him. Silvarius refused and Vigilius then claimed to Belisarius that Pope Silvarius had written to Wittage's offering to betray the city. Belisarius did not believe this accusation, but Vigilius produced false witnesses to testify to this, and through persistence overcame his scruples. Silvarius was summoned to the Pynchon Palace, where he was stripped of his vestments and handed over to Vigilius, who dispatched him into exile. Procopius omits all mention of religious controversy in Vigilius's actions. He writes that Silvarius was accused of offering to betray Rome to the Goths. Upon learning of this, Belisarius had him deposed, put in a monk's habit and exiled to Greece. Several other senators were also banished from Rome at the same time on similar charges. Belisarius then appointed Vigilius. Richard's attempts to reconcile these divergent accounts into a unified account. He points out that Liberatus wrote his breviarium at the height of the three chapter controversy, when Vigilius was being regarded by his opponents as anti Christ and Liberatus was prominent among these opponents, and the Liber Pontificalis drew from an account written at the same time. Once these religious elements are removed, Richard's argues that it is clear. The whole episode was political in nature. He points out for Justinian's plans to recover Rome and Italy, that there should be a pro Eastern pope substituted as soon as possible. The ideal candidate was at hand in Constantinople. The deacon Vigilius's principal motivation throughout his career, as far as can be ascertained, was the desire to be pope, and he was not really concerned about which faction put him there. Topic. Canonization Pope Silvarius was later recognized as a saint by popular acclamation, and is now the patron saint of the island of Ponza, Italy. The first mention of his name in a list of saints dates to the 11th century. He is also called Saint Silvarius San Silverio. According to Ponza Island's legend, fishermen were in a small boat in a storm off Pomerola and they called on Saint Silvarius for help. An apparition of Saint Silvarius called them to Pomerola, where they survived. 
This miracle made him venerated as a saint. See also List of Catholic saints List of popes References Literature Louise Ropes Loomis, The Book of Popes. Liber Pontificalis. Merchantville, N.J., Evolution Publishing. ISBN 1-889758-86-8 Reprint of the 1916 edition. English translation with scholarly footnotes, and illustrations. Wilhelm Kohl 1995. Silverius. In Bots, Traugott. Biographisch Bibliographisches Kirchenlexikon BBKL in German, 10. Herzberg, Botz, Calls. 336-338. ISBN 3-88309-062-X. Claire Sotinel, Silverio, in, Encyclopedia dei Papi. 2000 http colon slash slash www.newadvent.org slash cathan slash 13793a. HTMCE External links Pope Silverius in the Ecumenical Lexicon of Saints